So it's going to be a big, a big shock <laughs> after that with the next yes. pair. <laughs> and this pair has to be put somewhere. So I decided to put there. It's like a true normand of a, of a, of a dinner. And that was actually Florence's idea to put these two vintages together. So these vintages are almost the same color and these two vintages have 110 years apart. Wow. What? 110 years apart. Wow. So oh that's Paolo my Guess. The Lord. number 8 is 1971. Wow. And the number 7 is 1863. The oldest wow. vintage. Wow. Oh my Lord. Number 7. Number 7. Oh, he's the oldest. Wow. 1863, which is really Oh, I guess we're only 100 years <laughs> apart. <laughs> 1863. Three. Wow. And we had the 1863 in New York in yeah. 2000. Yeah. 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 It's amazing to have 80, uh, 150 amazing. year old bottles in such a shape. Mm. But then I'm just thinking it could be where it's a vintage that uh, is very, very uh, youthful and rich. And just the 10 in my mind, I just keep on thinking 59, but. Um, you know, maybe I'm wrong on that. And I thought that uh, that uh, nine was more like uh, 62 or something. So anyways, I, I think both wines are absolutely fabulous. Uh, I prefer 10, but you know, who, who cares? They're, they're both fascinating wines, showing the different styles of the tour. One, the nine being that beautiful, elegant, perfumed, uh, refined Latour and then the other one is the more powerful and rich style. Anyways, two fabulous wines. I f find this pair to, the mo to be the most perfect pair uh, so far um, in terms of drinkability. I mean, nine is, is just perfect. I, I mm. find it to be a bit more mature than what James and Jeannie uh, have guessed so far. I, I, I believe it can be back to the 20s, maybe even a 29. Um, I mean, I'm, I'm not going to guess 21, 24, 26, or 28, but I think somehow it reminded me of the, of the 29. <clears throat> Which one? <laughs> number nine, number nine. 10 is quite a bit younger, but um, if I remember correctly, the 61 source from this cellar is undrinkable. It's so youthful that it needed at least four to five hours of decanting. But, I mean, that's why I asked James earlier on whether this could be his wine. Um, I'm not going to guess 71 again because it, it <laughs> came out already. So you had 71 as well. <laughs> <laughs> so I think this could be the 45. But two perfect wines. Completely, completely um, um, uh, classy. Absolutely class act, and uh, I, I think they are quite, quite, quite a few years apart. I'm mean, kind of go with what Michelle suggested, which is 20s, and then sort of something more contemporary, 50s. Um, exactly which year? Um, not 71, Palo. Sorry, mm. but uh, <laughs> um, love the love the density in uh, tan. Love the, the the density with the linearness. Um, and just a lovely salty mineral tang that you can perceive on the end. Um, number nine. Um, a, a, a hint of burgundy like uh, in its uh, aromatics and its texture beautiful very very elegant completely you know I think we talked about masculine and feminine I think there's a bit of both here um, lovely thank you it's funny because someone said at some point it could be 70 and 82 and who said that it was a sort of a before oh. we started the round table wow. <coughs> and 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 this uh, yeah, so it's not it's not it's, yeah. uh, and it's funny it's not it's, it's not at all in 1782 but I had the chance to, to taste the 82 uh, often and I was always trying to rem to refer to with what is the 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 older vintage that would could look like 82 and and there's a vintage that has bottle variation and could be so stiff and tight and, and so not 82. 
And sometimes some bottles are closer to, mm. for me, to 82 style. Mm. It's only one vintage like this. It's the 1970. Mm. Ah. And bottle number 10 is 1970, wow. more on the 82 style mm. yeah, for yeah. me, yeah, yeah, yeah. which is delicious. You said it, you could drink it and drink it and drink it exactly like 82. You could sip a bottle. A great, a mm. Wow. Bottle. And some 70 so bottles are, are more like, you know, like some, uh, as Gaia would say, John Wayne style, you know, a bit <laughs> more. Oh. Yeah, we open two bottles. This is a delicious way. bottle of 70. Mm. Yeah, I agree. More on the accessible side, mm. sweet side. Yeah, yeah. And as you all mentioned, uh, uh, the number nine is a different category, different winemaker. You said 20s. It's not 20s, but it's close to the winemaking of the 20s. It has not changed a lot in the style. Um, it's 1947. Oh, and it's wow. a good bottle of yeah. 1947 oh, at okay. Lato, okay. which is not necessarily a very, very uh, mm. prominent vintage. Mm. It's a very good bottle of 47. Mm. Yeah, what a tasting. What really struck me was that we tasted these amazing old wines that people went down into the cellar. And you know that that's the best shot that these wines have because those bottles have never moved. It's all about provenance, meaning the wines were always in the cellar. And the wines like the 45 and the 61 were amazing, 100 points. Then there were other things, weird vintages that I'd never had, things from the 1800s that are beautiful. And I think that that's the most interesting thing, is thinking you're drinking history, but history right from its birthplace. That's, that's, that's the great thing about this tasting. I enjoyed immensely the, four, the last four wines. I mean, 47, 70, I, I wouldn't have guessed it uh, if you serve it to me another 10 times. Um, 61, 45, uh, I fortunately tasted this pair side by side uh, uh, a thanks. few times. Um, but I mean, <laughs> sorry, Jansis. Jansis. Um, but 45 from from this cellar, it, it has to be the best 45 uh, uh, Latour. Honestly, 61 for me is still relatively young. Uh, it still needs plenty of time. But overall, the the perfect wine of the evening was indeed 45. 1897, by far my favorite wines. Um, it's easy to love a 61 and a 45, who doesn't? But, you know, you don't, you don't get 1897 very often. Uh, 1971 was another really, really nice, classy uh, Latour sort of wines. And again, um, fame, vintages are kind of predictable, but I think there's a lot of great diversity here. Absolutely tremendous, but uh, really just, um, my God, what a hell of an experience, really. This is, I mean, guys, just, this is a once in a lifetime treat to do a tasting like this. Very humble. Let's do it every so year. We, we, we so draw, we drew from 1863 to 1985, was the youngest. And that, that's what we're going to put at auction. We're going to put this big, big, big bracket of vintages uh, coming from uh, great provenance, but still being, still with this uncertainty of bottle variation anyway. Better to be brutally honest, never completely eliminate bottle variation. This will always exist, and this is fun. Because all of us have tasted already some 70s, some 45 some 61 and we can we can have five six seven different uh, tasting notes i mean we, we're not we're not in the standardized right. no. it's not a standardized exercise this is still you know and if we taste them blind it's even worse because i mean <laughs> bottle variation plus remembering exactly what they taste like makes it very difficult 19 1990 1909 are a bit touchy 1893 1897 but they all seem to be Maybe not fully in 1893, they all seem to be pretty much in their juice. 1947, compared to 1947, we had a good bottle, we had a very good bottle in 45. 61, maybe not the best, but normal. <coughs> 71 was excellent, thanks to Paolo. And this is the history of, a, of an estate. You have ups and downs. I mean, there's no reason to hide, you know. We some, some, in some cases, we know exactly why. Uh, vi vi vineyard management practices, vinification practices. Some, some case, some case, in some cases, we're not too sure why it, it's like this. 
um, but we have to accept it. And we have to accept also that we're not sh we, we can't gather all the elements and all the information on these old bottles. Mm. We would like to have them, it's not available, so we have to accept it. I'd like to propose a toast to Frederic and Florence for a time. Merci. Thank you. Cheers. Thank you. Thank you. Merci. Cheers. Nice to you guys. Thanks for coming. Thank you. Thank you.